Hi, if you are a real pyramid geek and love geometry and love angles and learning every little detail about how a pyramid is constructed and the way that the math is done, then this, this uh, video is going to be for you. But if you're a person who uh, really is not that interested in it, you're not going to hear me say this very often, but I would pass on this video because we're going to be talking numbers and geometry today. So for those of you who want to uh, learn more about how we calculate uh, the dimensions of a Stargate Pyramid, uh, you're in the right place. Hi, this is Charlie Zeese with Stargate Pyramids. I have been uh, getting requests uh, fairly steadily for the last couple of months now for more information on not only how to build your own pyramid, but how I actually go about calculating uh, the numbers and the ratios and, and, and the nitty gritty of, of figuring out these numbers. Now, we've gone through the derivation of the 76.345 degree slant angle in other uh, videos, so I'm not going to be covering that today. What I'm going to be showing you is how I calculate uh, the size of each of the pieces of pipe and the dimensions and the things that you'd want to know about in terms of a methodology if you were going to be building your own pyramid. So what I'm gonna do is open up uh, a little presentation that I put together on this topic and uh, we'll get started right now. To begin with, uh, I wanna to go to a, a slide that I prepared quite a while ago and I've shown in other uh, videos dealing with, uh, with geometry. But this is a, um, a website that you can go to, 1728.com. And there's a, I'll have a specific link to this page on that website uh, in the comment section below. But what it does, it gives you a methodology for determining uh, all of the various angles, all of the various dimensions of a pyramid uh, that's uh, an equilateral pyramid. So to go through, I'm going to use the cursor here to show you how this works. Uh, you, when you go to this uh, link, you can use these dimensions to come up with the 76.345 degree slant angle. But you'll put in an input of, of four. I'm using a real simplistic uh, base length here of 10 to show you how you de uh, determine the height to base length ratio. That ratio is 2.058176 to one. And um, we can go, again, that's just the number and that's the one that'll get you to the 76.345 degree slant angle, which we have previously determined. So if you always make sure that your ratio of height to base length is 2.058176 0581761 to 1, then you're going to come up with a slant angle of 76.345 degrees. And all of your other, if that's correct, all of your other calculations that you'll find on this page are going to be correct. So just keep that ratio in mind. That's the most important ratio that you need to know when you're figuring these uh, calculations going forward. So let me talk about the methodology that I use for measuring the dimensions of my pyramid and how I derive them based upon that ratio. And these are, these are fundamental uh, to the way that I do this. This doesn't mean they're the only way that this could be done, but you'll see the method to my madness here in a, in a minute as we go through this methodology. The first thing is I make all of my measurements off of the inside edge of the, of the pipe. Uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about uh, as we go through the slides for that. But this is particularly important with respect to the vertical pipes, uh, as you'll see as we go forward. And I use this convention because it allows, we're talking definitions here, the apex point at the top of the pyramid to be equal to the actual height of the pyramid. And you'll see how that works as we proceed. If I used, and I used to do this when I always put a capstone on the top of the pyramids, but I changed my methodology about six months ago. But if 
I use the middle or the outside edge of the pipe as the point of measurement, this would not be the case. And you'll see kind of why uh, as we proceed on, uh, but, uh, and therefore the rationale for this convention uh, is really one based upon practicality now that I'm making the pyramids without the capstones, uh, it, bec it became so much easier to, to make the convention, as you'll see, based upon measuring from the inside of the pipe. Now, this isn't the only way that you can do this if you're building your own pyramid, but you need to consider how you want to make your angle, uh, your, your, your measurements, whether you want to do it on the inside, the middle, or the outside edge of your pipe or your, your, the facings that you're going to be putting on your pyramid. So that's beyond the scope of this discussion for today. But uh, if you want to use this as a basis for, for learning how to do it yourself, you're going to have to think through that uh, and determine how you want to do it yourself. This is just the way I have done it, and you'll see why here in a minute. So what we're going to do, we're going to use one of the three-foot pyramids that I uh, uh, recently introduced uh, uh, as a product in our product line offering. And here's a picture of it. Now here's a picture of the pyramid looking straight down into it from the top. And you'll notice, and this is key, uh, for those of you new to this, you'll see that the edges are not totally perpendicular. And so what it's going to require is an understanding of what the base length of a pyramid built with this kind of uh, construction actually means. And we're going to discuss that here in a moment. So the first thing I want to do is to show you the height of this three-foot pyramid. And you'll see I've got a tape measure that's stuck between the top of the four pieces of pipe. And you'll see that the bottom of uh, the, uh, the pieces of pipe uh, with the cap uh, on top is about 36 inches. Now, if I didn't have the cap on there, the outside edge would be 36 inches, but I've decided to throw that on. I'm not trying to complicate things for you, but just keep that in mind that these calculations were originally done before I uh, was putting caps onto these, but I've maintained them and you'll see why in a minute. So the, the, the height of the pyramid is uh, to, the, to the bottom of the, um, uh, cap that we put on it is 36 inches. Now, what we've done in this picture, you're going to see here in the middle, I've actually taken two of the zip ties that we uh, have, um, uh, that we use to, to put together the, uh, the, the, the top assembly of each of the pyramids, and I've taped them on to the sides of two of the two pyramids so that we can determine basically where that theoretical apex point is if, if all four of the pipes were to, to, to continue on uh, and, and meet uh, at a central point higher up. Now, that can't happen just because they have depth and width and so forth, so they can't go any higher than they are now. But that's, uh, you can see it's a little bit higher, obviously, than, uh, than the... Uh, uh, edge of the pyramid or, or pipe itself. So when we go and check that apex point, we're going to see that when you, when you look at it straight on, it's basically equivalent to the height of the, uh, of the pipes uh, with the, the, the caps that we have uh, on the pyramid or uh, pipes now, and that that height actually, the actual height of the pyramid with the caps equals 36 and a half inches. I'm going to move, there we go, that screen so you can see that, is 36 and a half inches, which also happens to be the apex point. And that's why I changed my dimensions uh, from figuring them before in the middle of the pipe to where now when people get these pyramids, they're going to find it's probably 36 and a half or a half, depending on the size of the pyramid, it'll be about a half inch taller. But that's uh, a lot easier for people to understand than why it might be three or four inches different. And I've gotten tons of questions about that in the past. So that's the reason why I'm doing this because 
by figuring all of my dimensions on the inside, the height of the pyramid is equal to the apex point, and so the mathematics starts to uh, flow very easily, and it's a lot easier to comprehend. I don't know if that made sense, but I hope it did. Um, but once you uh, start with a third, this three-foot pyramid, and we 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 actually start with a 36 and a half inch height, uh, we're going to figure uh, what the base length needs to be based upon now a 36 and a half inch height of the pyramid. And that half inch again is due to adding on those caps that we've started to add on over the last uh, several months. Now on the left hand column is that determination. I put on the right hand column that same chart that we had from the very first slide. And you can see we had to tw on the right hand side 20.58 to 10. We're going to do the same thing here. The given here is a height of 36.5 inches, and we're going to divide by 2.058.1761 to attain a base length of 17.734 inches. And if you go down, you'll see, once again, that ratio produces the very slant angle that we're looking for, which is 76.345 degrees. So we now know that for a pyramid height of 36 and a half inches, that we need a base length of 17.734 inches to have the base length be the right size. So that is the remaining thing that we need to, to, to concern ourselves with as we build this pyramid going forward. So here's where uh, th this uh, irregular uh, use of the 245s uh, has, has caused uh, some problems for people who are trying to do this on their own. So I wanted to give some visuals as to how that calculation actually has to be done. And you'll see here, we're going to have some close-ups in a minute. That base length of 17.73 inches is going to go from the midpoint of each of the, each of the uh, vertical pipes from one end to the other. And uh, you're going to want to calculate that. Uh, since this is coming off of uh, an angle, you're going to want to make sure that that intersecting point is you, you allow for the, the, the verticality or the, the slant when you determine the actual uh, length of the, of the pipe. And I'm going to show you some close-ups as to how we actually do that. So here we have the, the, the first end of the, um, of the tape measure. You can see the pipe is coming down here at an angle, and I try to uh, match the zero point up uh, the tip of the, of the tape measure with that point where it would theoretically hit the floor. And so that's the way I do, do the first end. And then similarly on the second end, you want the top of the tape measure to be parallel to the point where it would theoretically intersect on the floor uh, at that angle. So here's an even further close up of that. You can see that here's 17 um, and a half inches. We're looking for 1773. Here's the uh, 17 and three quarter inch mark. Uh, we're right within the, uh, the uh, estimate of 17.73 inches. We might be one to two hundredths of an inch off here. But you'd want it, you know, for perfection, you'd want to make that calculation and have that come down and be perfectly on the inside of that 17 and three quarter inch mark. So uh, that's the way that the base length needs to be calculated. And finally, uh, people have been confused, and I've, I've, I've kind of tried to uh, make a different definition now. On the website, I uh, have now started to use a definition of the exterior base dimension. Uh, and that, uh, in this case, is 22.35 inches. And what that is, actually, is from the outside of one pipe to the outside of the other. And in effect, what we're trying to calculate here is not anything that is directly related to the sacred geometry, but it just has to do with the dimensions that you need 
uh, a floor space to, uh, to allow the pyramid to actually uh, sit on the floor. So when you look, you'll see that we're very, very close to the 22.35 inches that I've calculated. Now, a word about precision here I think is important. Uh, we have calculated the geometry of the uh, uh, Stargate Pyramid at 76.345 degrees. And we try our very, very best to make sure that these uh, pyramids, when they leave the shop, are as accurate as we can possibly get them. But there are a number of things that are going to keep them from being perfect, not the least of which is imprecision and cuts. More importantly, the precision or the lack thereof in terms of the, the, the depth of the, or the uh, outside diameter of the pipes is going to make a minor difference sometimes. And I have to bore these out to try to get it as close as I can to where they fit snugly inside, but still go in completely. So there's a lot of things that are gonna vary here, but for the perfectionists in the group, you now know if you get your pyramid and it's just a little bit off, uh, you can try to make those adjustments if you care to. One of the things that's gonna happen if you start to bore holes or uh, you know, do this, you may change the dynamics of the tension between the connector and, and the uh, pipe itself. But um, suffice it to say, we're gonna be extremely close uh, when these go out uh, from the shop, but the, these basic techniques and methodologies could be incorporated if you wanted to try to achieve an even greater uh, level of perfection. And also, this can serve as a methodology for people who are interested in building their own pyramids. You're going to have to, uh, uh, again, come up with a, a methodology. You can use this one of using the inside dimensions. For me, that's, that makes sense because of the reasons that I've explained to you earlier. You may find if you're working in other materials that it's easier to do it from the outside. Uh, it's really going to be up to you uh, how you do that but I wanted to give you an explanation of how we did it, and then that should be some thoughts, uh, give you uh, some thought, or you know, provoke some thoughts as to how you may want to do it if you're doing this yourself. For those of you who have further questions, I would suggest that you go to the forum uh, that we have on uh, stargatepyramids.com, join the forum, and start to ask your questions there, because I think people are going to maybe have uh, ideas of their own as to maybe how I could improve my technique. I would love to get, uh, you know, some people thinking about alternative ways to, to do this uh, that might be more effective uh, for me and for those who may be wanting to build a pyramid on your own. So I hope all of this is helpful. I hope it's not too confusing, but uh, let's, let's take the discussion over to the forum. If there's other questions about uh, geometry, uh, please feel free to put them there and I'll try to answer them on behalf of the group. As always, I thank you for watching. Tell your friends about Stargate Pyramids. Uh, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, ring the bell and uh, like the, this pyramid. If you'd like, and if you'd like more information about this, put that down in the comments section. We thank you for watching and you have a great day.